Hello, welcome to TechWeb Dots. Today, I will discuss what are the core concepts of Entity Framework. Okay, so let's start without wasting time. So, agenda for today's session is so these all concepts are very important. I strongly recommend you to watch the previous video in which I have explained what is Entity Framework core and what is entity framework and I have also discussed what are the different versions and what, what are the differences in them okay so I strongly recommend you to watch that before proceeding and this session is for beginners where we can understand the all the important concepts before directly jump into the code this is the solution that we are going to discuss in the next session okay so ADU.NET base libraries are a very important part of Entity Framework Core because everything is uh, based on ADU.NET base libraries. You can use ADU.NET libraries in three conceptually unique manner. One is connected, I mean in the old way if you, if you can recall this, using connection objects, command objects and data reader. We use three set of combination and we uh, you know, perform any operation on the database, any uh, data changes that you want to perform, either it is read operation, insert operation, update operation or delete operation. And the second one is disconnected mode. When you say disconnected mode, so the one thing is comes in our mind is we are talking about the data sets. Okay, yes, the disconnected layer allow you to manipulate a set of data table object contained within a data set that functions as a client side copy of the external data. If caller wants to submit the changes back to data store, the data adapter is used to update the data source. I mean in conjunction with a set of SQL statement. So these are the two ways that are very common in ADO.NET or .NET history. And the third one is ORM, which is Object Relational Mapper. This is the very uh, important one. And the example of it is uh, Entity Framework. c -sharp objects represent the data in application-centric manner and abstract much of the data access code away from the developer. Means many of the steps are already completed by object relation mapper if we are using it okay so let's move ahead to the another concept which is code first approach what are entities so before that all the versions of entity framework up to including entity framework 6.x i'm in the any number supporting uh, using an entity designer to create entity data model xml which we call them edmx file Right, and starting from version 4.1, Entity Framework adds support for plain old CLR object, and we call them POC classes. Okay, so POC classes, it's not anything related to old, but it is just a name, and using th this technique referred to as code first approach. So, Entity Framework code will support only code first paradigm and dropping all EDMX support. Yes, it is very important, and I'm repeating it once again. Entity Framework Core which will support only the code first paradigm, dropping all EDMX support. That's the main point in Entity Framework Core. You can use code first from existing database or create a new database from the entities using Entity Framework migration. Okay, code first really just means no EDMX file. That's it. The strongly typed classes are officially called entities. And entities are a conceptual model of physical database that maps to your business domain. Formally speaking, this model is termed as entity data model. Okay, in code first world, most people refer to POC classes as we just discussed as model and the collection of these classes as object graph. Okay, when the model classes are instantiated with data from the data store, then they are referred as entities this is very important point okay and this is my book class which is going to work as an entity so i hope now uh, we understand what is entities and what is the use of ADO and libraries now we will talk about a bit role of tv context if you are not aware about that because this is a beginner uh, part of it so dp context class 
represent a combination of unit of work and repository pattern so if you are not about the uh, these two patterns so i will leave a link and you can uh, pick the card that i've added here and you can go through that so the unit of work and repository pattern that can be used to query from a database and group together changes that will be written back to the single unit of work so that's why these two patterns are used db context provide a number of core services to child classes including the ability to save all changes which results in a database update tweak the connection string delete objects call store procedures and handle other fundamental details okay so example of db context is let's suppose we are creating employee entities and we are using the db context as a parent class and in that we are using the constructor m employee entities and we are calling the base class constructor and bypassing the name of the employee connection or you can say the connection is string on the right hand side we can see there are different members of db context class and in that we can see there's an entry and there's an entry of type entity and get validation error save changes save changes asynchronous configuration and database and there are two events as well of a db context one is object materialize and the second one is saving changes and all version of entity framework wrap each call to save changes or save changes asynchronous in a transaction the isolation level of these automatic transaction is the same as the default isolation level of the database which is read committed for sql server okay this is my db context class that i am going to use in the next session so i hope it is clear now what is db context okay now we will understand what is the use of db set here to add tables into your context you add a db set of type okay for each table in your object model to enable lazy loading the properties in the context need to be virtual like this okay so don't worry if all the things are not clear at this point of time in the upcoming uh, session i will explain these things again and again in detail in practical manner as well okay so don't worry about that each db set provides a number of core services to each collection such as creating deleting finding records in the represented table okay so as you can see here we uh, there is a using statement in that we are creating a object of employee entities right and that context object is calling the employees dot add method in that we can add any number of employees right and by passing the few name like name is shown company is tech web dots and we are calling the save changes method through which we are saving the data into the database with the help of this db set and db context on the right hand side we can see there are different members of db set we can call add add range attach create and create of type which is job generic type find find asynchronous remove and remove range and the last one is sql query okay so these are the very important point and here employee entities is a relationship derived db context okay and if i minimize it you can see we are using connection string and db context is here we are calling the on configure method and we are using it with the sql server okay and in the program section and this is a startup class and in this section we are calling the asynchronous and saving the data in the sql server database so now we understand what is the role of db set now the next point is how you know i, I mean when you are working in a real time application then you must be thinking how we can change and change the entity state or how can we track the changes in our entity, entity state because now our entity is our table and it is our data containing entity okay so the db change tracker automatically tracks the state of any object loaded into a db set within a db context that's a very good thing in previous example while inside the using statement any changes to a data will be tracked and saved when save changes is called on the employee entity class okay you usually don't need to worry about the state of your object however in case of deleting an object 
you can set the state of the object to entity state dot deleted and save a round trip to the database and your data will be updated according to the state changes on the right hand side we can see the different value of the entities that can be deattached unchanged added deleted and modified and the last one is if you need to check the state of an object let's suppose we want to check what is the state use the following code so we can uh, write something entity state and check context dot entity and pass the entity name dot state so we will get the state of that entity so i hope it is clear now in the next part we will discuss what is data annotation it is very important part Right. While we are working with code first, either we are working with APIs, we are creating any type of .NET Core application. So these all concepts are very, very important. Okay. So data annotation are C# -sharp attributes that are used to shape your entities. List some of the most uh, commonly used data annotation for defining how your entity classes and properties map to a database tables and fields so on the right side see we can see we can apply key we can apply required foreign key string length not map currency check concurrency check timestamp table column database generated not mapped and index so these are the very famous one and there are many more annotation that you can use to refine your model and add validation now you have a better understanding of what the ADAD.NET entity framework is and how it works from a high level. Okay, now it's time to look at the first full example. I hope uh, you like the video. Thanks for watching. And if you have any uh, question, you can leave a comment in the comment box. I will try to respond as soon as possible. So stay tuned. I will see you in the next video. Your feedback is very important and that's the only inspiration for me to create such videos. So don't forget to subscribe, hit like and share with your friends and circle. Again, have a good day ahead. Bye-bye.